Accelerate Church Television broadcast. We're so glad you're here with us today. Shortly, we'll be joining Pastor Jeremy with the sermon series already in progress entitled Building a Strong Foundation. He's talking to us today about the importance of how and what we're building our life upon. Let's get in there right now. Grace and peace, two things that can't be bought with money, can only be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and under Jesus being your Lord. There is no grace and there is no peace unless you've made Jesus your Lord. Hear me clearly today. The more you understand about God, the more you understand about the Lordship issue of Jesus, the more grace and peace you'll walk in. I'll say it this way. The more you understand how important it is for Jesus to be your Lord, the more grace and peace you'll walk in. The less you understand how important that is, the less grace and peace will be multiplied to your life. I'm explaining your life to you here. The more you know, the more grace and peace is multiplied, all right? Anything you need in life is available in the Word of God. That's why he said in verse 3, 2 Peter 1, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things. Everybody say all things. All things. Now people struggle believing this. But everything you need in life and everything you need to live godly is found in the word of God. It is. You say, well, I haven't seen it. Keep searching. Keep searching. Let's look at this. His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through. So he shows us out. The channel is coming through. Through the knowledge of him who's called us by glory and virtue. In other words, there's power. By which, look at verse 4, have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Where are the promises found? It's not a trick question. Where are the promises found? They're found in the word, right? So they're found in the word. This is where these promises are, that through these, through what? Through the, do you need to stand, do some jumping jacks this morning? Y'all awake? Yes, through what? The promises. the promises. You may be partakers of the divine nature. Yes. Woo! See, listen, listen, listen. I have a spiritual father, Ricky Fowle, Pastor Ricky, founding father. He, he called me, said, I, I'm going to send you an email, something to the effect, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, the Lord gave me this word, I was up early this morning, I know it's for you, and it was the scripture, how long halt you between two opinions? It's a King James version of a story that was happening in the Old Testament. It's a good thing I'm not a false preacher and don't believe in the Old Testament, or I'd immediately say, oh, I dismiss that, that's old tea, baby. But instead, I knew exactly what it was about starting a Christian school. How long will I hop between two opinions? Do I, do I not? Do I, do I not? Do I, do I not? It's tons of work. You haven't seen probably what I've seen with Christian school. It's drained a lot of churches. It's squished a lot of churches. It has. Lots of people in church that believed in it lost their kids to the world even though they put them in the Christian school. Why? It's not a magic pill. Go there, take that, it's all great. You still got to live it out, young people. And guess what? If they don't see you living it out at home, you're wasting your time. In fact, what they see at home matters more than anything. But listen, you bring them to church, you're like, and you go to church, you're going to hear the truth, right? Nowadays, sadly, you can't hear that at every church, but there's still a lot of them that tell the truth. You get them to church, so if they see it at home, they see it at church, then why would you want them to spend... 35 to 45 hours a week with people that cannot say anything about God. Because it will affect the money situation. If they do. See, it's much better to get that three tight band, that foundation under your child. So people have said this to me. Well, I know tons of people that are rebels that went to Christian school. I said, yeah, I went to school with a bunch of them. They may watch this. I don't know. Sometimes they sneak on and watch. I'm not talking about everybody I went to school with. But I went to school with a lot of rebels. That's a fact. Most of them that are real rebels have deleted me. They don't like it because they saw what I'm doing now. I'm actually following God's plan. And it convicts them because God set them up. 
So here's what I'm saying. They're out in the world in spite of the foundation their parents put in their life, not because of it. So you flip this coin around. People have said, well, some people that know, your wife went to public school. I know. I know that. I know she did. I'm not against you if you go to public school. You know, Farrell went to public school. Her sister, Sydney, went to public school. So do I go in the corner and go over here and say, well, Christian school don't work. No, they're Christians in spite of it. You know why? Because what they saw at home and what they saw at church was able to carry them past that. But here's what you can't do is be a dingling and say, well, look, they made it. They're great people. They made it in spite of that, not because of that. So you see how this works. You need to hear this. Because people are always they try to evaluate it. But look, what we showed you today is fruit. That's why I'm talking this way. This is fruit. Because look, I, I know I'm responsible ultimately for my family more than I am even y'all. But because of God's call on my life, I can't go and separate it all. My family's important. I have a priority list. I understand that. My wife, me and my wife's more important than me and my kids. If you don't get that, you're going to live one mixed up life. It's you and, it's you and your spouse. That's the foundation. One man, one woman. See, all this is under attack. Who do you think is attacking this? The devil. Because it, then it erodes the foundation in someone's life. You got a man, you got a woman. They're a family unit. The best thing you could ever do for your children is for them to be grossed out because y'all kiss in front of them. I did. I kissed my wife the other day. My kids like, oh. I said, hush. You do that again, I'll put four more on her right here. In truth, here's what I know. Down deep, even though they do say, yeah, I don't want to say that. Even though they, even though they say that, down deep speaks to their foundation. It gives them that solid footing, see. Well, you're going to set yourself up good as a family unit. If you understand, that's your commitment first. Then I'm called by God to train my children in the way they should go. Their arrows. I've got a bunch of them. i got seven arrows. You don't find much more fletching going on than what i got going on. Feathers everywhere fletching those arrows, right? <laughs> I was reminded this week of a vacation I went on with my parents where I got a swat with a flip-flop. Because <laughs> they forgot the board. So I thought I was scot-free. I could let a little rebellion out, you know. Mom said, I'm taking my flip-flop off, boy. Bend over. You remember that? I think she broke it, actually. She said, man, if I ain't got a board, I got a flip-flop. I got caught in a situation with my children this week. I didn't have a board, but I had a hairbrush. But it was a Barbie one, so it just kind of didn't really do much. Now, for those out there wondering, you, do, you are not supposed to ever strike your child anywhere but on their rear end, according to the Bible. Parenting class will be another day. I didn't see myself getting into this. But here's why I'm bringing it up, because through what I've read in the Word, I see this. Grounding it going to do jack. You're grounded. Oh, they'll bellyache about it. Woo! They ain't doing nothing, biblically. And a Barbie brush ain't doing nothing biblically either. That's why that's the first time ever for that. The Bible says it's a rod. And sometimes a flip-flop has to work, though, right, Mama? <laughs> Let me take this off. Boy, I heard, I told that story one time, and a Spanish lady said, that's the way I raise my children. That's why I wore flip-flops all the time. I said, oh, mijo, come over here. I'm going to get you with this flip-flop. And then I saw my daughter have these hard plastic flip-flops. I said, "Woo!" Thank God mom wasn't wearing those that day. <laughs> now I'm making jokes about this, but listen, whether it's child training, whether it's marriage, training your child in the way that you go, church attendance, the way you work on your job, all of it's going to be found right here in the Word. Why? By these precious promises, through these, you may be partakers of the divine nature. That, what, that right there is worth meditating on. I brought all that up, you know, by talking about Pastor Ricky telling me how long halt you between two opinions. I decided that's it. I'm going to do what God called me and assigned me to do. 
So when I do that and I hear, you know, Mr. Griffin say, thank you, or someone says, wow, you started this. I'm just along for the ride like you. All I know is this, that when I know God's spoken to me to train my children, that's my responsibility. I got this right with my wife. Then I'm like, okay, we, we are called by God to raise up godly seeds and arrows. I could have just said just for me and my house, we're going to make this thing and do it right. But then I said, wait a minute, I'm responsible for a whole church. You've got children too. And I'm, in, I'm responsible to tell you. And so what kind of pastor am I to tell you this and not provide an avenue for you to do this? And that's really what Accelerate Christian School is all about. And it's all based on the Word. See, the reason Josh was talking about tithing and sowing seed, the reason you tithe is because it's in the Word. The reason you assemble in a church is because it's in the Word. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806 418 8913. If you'll just do the word, through that, you become a partaker of God's nature. Mm. My, 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 my. See, and that's exactly why church attendance is a stronghold for some folks. It's hard to make it consistently. Have you noticed? It's hard to open the Bible daily, hard to worship daily, hard to do. When I say hard, it's really not hard on your flesh once you're trained to do it. But what I'm saying is things fight for your attention. It never fails. If you don't get rigid and disciplined like a disciple is supposed to be about, this is my time in the Word. This is my time in worship. This is my time in prayer. Something's going to fight for that attention in that time. And then days go by. Days turn to weeks, weeks to months, months to years. Pretty soon you look up and your whole life's Passed you by. I'll never forget my grandmother telling me that at age 81 or two. We sit on her front porch. She said, I can't believe I'm the age I am. I feel like I should be your age. I'm like, that's my grandmother talking to me, right? She's in heaven now. But I'm just telling you this. The reason I know she's in heaven, because of the promises in the word. The promises in the word. The reason I believe my children are going to follow God's plan is because I've got a promise in the Word. And not only that, my dad's taking his promises in the Word that it'll go to his children and his children's children. Amen. Now see, look how you set yourself up if you'll believe and get your eyes just off you. As long as you're just all about you all the time, no wonder you're not seeing the big picture. Through these promises, you become a partaker of the divine nature, having escaped... The corruption, that's pollution. That's things that erode your foundation. It's out here in the world through lust. you got to get rid. I've already mentioned this in this series. you got to get rid of lust. That's not just sexual, but it includes sexual. you got to get rid of lust. And you got to get rid of the corruption that's in this world. And if you build on either one of those, that's shaky sand. Listen to me clearly. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. It will be shaken, absolutely. If you're going to escape, you're going to have to take these promises. Because look what it says. Through these promises, you've been made partakers. I've covered that. Having escaped. Do you see that? It's through these promises that we escape from wrath to come. It's through these promises we escape from the dangers of sin. Sin will root out every bit of prosperity in your life. Escape from every evil thing that's designed to make you slip. Here's your homework assignment today. I want you to read the next several verses. Again, I was going to break down each part, and I did what I believe the Lord allowed me to do here on those first few verses. And you're going to find a, a list of things that you add to the mix of your foundation so that you never stumble. Isn't that good news? So that you never sin, so that you never fail, so that you never fall. This is a great homework assignment if you ask me. Well, what are they, Pastor? I'll mention a few. Self-control. Self-control is saying no. Self-control is saying that's enough. Self-control may be saying no, 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 but that's news to a lot of Christians. <laughs> uh, another one, giving all diligence. This is after he said give more, more diligence at the end of it. Well, he says in there, give all diligence. That means give it your all. I was proud of our 
high school basketball team. Of course, I got tickled in the highlight video because it only showed our first game, didn't show our second game. Um, we played a good team the second time around that beat us pretty good. And I asked the guys something. They came off the court. I said, hey, did you give it your all? They said, yeah. So that's all I've ever looked for. If you, if you give it your all, do you know that's all the Heavenly Father is ever looking for in your life? But the truth is a lot of people claim they give it their all when they don't give it their all. When you do give it your all, it's apparent. And not just on a basketball court, but in life. And if you think you can pull the wool over God's eyes, I've got news for you. He can tell whether or not you are giving it your all. So self-control, giving all diligence, faith, faith. Oh, man, I love Mark's message on faith Wednesday night. Faith. I love it. He said, my title is faith. <laughs> it's the narrow way, guys. It's the narrow way. Virtue. You got to have some power. Perseverance. You don't give up easy. Godliness. I'm just naming a few. That's all I'm going to name. You do your homework assignment. 2 Peter chapter 1. Read verses 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. It's going to take you a while to go and study all those. Get your Greek concordance out. Look up what those words mean. But here's what I want you to know. What he said in verse 10. If you do these things, you'll never stumble. If Miss Sarah can look at me and say, have you done the stretches and the exercises I, I told you about? If I say no, okay. So what if I start doing? Now I'm doing them. Now I'm doing them. Why? As I told my wife, I said, you watch, I'm going to build a strong core. I have the knowledge of how to do it. For some reason, I just failed to launch in that area. And I'm telling you this, when you're preaching, and, and you know, physical things are important because if your body breaks down, there goes, there goes your mission, there goes your call of God on your life, right? So you need a healthy body. But, but the Bible says that these things naturally exercise profits little. There's a lot of people that focus on, on the, the exercise and you need to exercise. But what you really need to do is get fit spiritually, talking push-ups, crunches spiritually. I'm talking you go through the same thing over and over, over and over, over and over. Hey, you know, I feel silly getting on the floor and doing it. It's hard to make time to do it, but sure does beat getting out on purpose, doing it and getting back up instead of falling on the floor, not being able to get up. Are you with me? So spiritually learn from my example. Because some people spiritually have been so hurt, so wounded. They're like me that Friday night, laid on the floor, just glad to get back on my knees. And I'm telling you, I had to have my wife help me to the restroom. That's pretty embarrassing. That's pretty embarrassing. All because why? I had the knowledge, I just didn't do it. I just didn't do it. But if you'll do it, and you'll be able to tell. If I'm up here again, oh, oh, you'll know, oh, Pastor Amen done it. But see, that's physical stuff. Spiritual stuff, here's the crazy thing. We can all hide that. Because God doesn't go tell all your dirty word. But I'm letting you know who said fruit don't lie. My wife said that. It's just the truth. Fruit don't lie. You might as well write that one down and take it to the bank. And so when you see the king of kings, you're, you're carrying a bag of fruit of your life. What are you going to show him? I knew every stat. The Masters Tournament 2022. I knew who's going to win today. The masters, the granddad of them all. Does that even matter? Well, the most in here already are like, no. But do you understand there's people across this world that's all they're thinking about right now? It's the masters. Augusta, Georgia. Amen corner. See, they know all this. So some of you are like, what are you talking about, Pastor? What are you on? I just happen to like golf myself. I just don't like it more than my God. Why? Because Tiger Woods never made me a partaker of the divine nature. He made me more carnal. You see that? Yep, there are guys. I thought about this. There are guys that wear their red, their red shirts today. People are praising him. Look, he came from a car wreck. He's back. All that energy, and there's no escaping corruption through that. You think it's wrong to watch it? No, I'm telling you this. It's amazing how we'll give so much energy and time and attention to something that is nothing to build on. I mean, zero to build on. You play golf? Good. I think that's great. Go out there and relax. Play golf. But you build your life on that? That doesn't help you escape corruption. 
So study these elements, godliness, perseverance, virtue, faith, all diligence, self-control. They need to be a part of your foundation. And don't be overwhelmed. Listen, the Holy Spirit wants me to tell you this. Don't be overwhelmed. Instead, just keep a steady diet of the Word of God coming into your life. Keep praying, keep worshiping, and know this. Every time you give attention to the Word of God, you're giving attention to your foundation. Every time you're giving attention to the Word of God, you're giving attention to your foundation. Let's look at a couple more foundational things here. And I'm obviously not going to get where I needed to go today, but go to Luke 6. i got to give you a couple more scriptures. i got to throw out some more seed here. I like that picture you painted in, in my own mind right there, Josh. Luke 6, verse 46. Thank God for the Word. God for the word. Jesus said, why? It's one of my favorite scriptures of all time. Because he's saying this before Judgment Day. He's saying this to people looking at him right in their eyes. See, the Lord wants you to think about things like this before it's too late. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? That's a good question to ask yourself today. I ask you, is Jesus your Lord? And I couldn't tell that it was every voice, but it sounded like every voice in there said, yes. In unison, that sounded cool. It's like it does when y'all sing. I love it. But write this down. Jesus must be your Lord to be your Savior. Write that down. Jesus must be your Lord to be your Savior. I understand this is foundational. But this is under attack right now, not only in America and the world, but in the church. Jesus must be your Lord to be your Savior. There's a mindset. Because there's teaching that's gone out there. And I've heard it in my life over and over again. Well, I made Jesus my Savior in 1969. Then in 1974, I made him my Lord. Didn't happen. They both come together. If you made him your Savior, you had to make him your Lord. If you make him your Lord, he becomes your Savior. This is foundational, but I'm telling you, people don't know this. You need to know this. Hopefully you already know this. Hopefully you've already heard this. But I'm sure in your foundation I'm saying, add a boy, add a girl, good job. Keep building on that. Jesus is your Lord. You can't say, well, Jesus saved me from my sins. And then years later I made him my Lord. Didn't happen. There's, a, there's also a saying that's gone around, and you need to catch this because it's true. Jesus is either Lord of all in your life or he's not Lord at all in your life. This is a much harder saying than the cliche you've heard and you're familiar with. He cannot be one without the other. Scripture's clear on this. You need to be clear on this. Jesus must be your Lord. So when you walk an altar call, when you cry out to him, when you say, Jesus, save me, what you're actually doing is you're saying, I give you the controls of my life. I surrender, right? You're now in control. Take control. Uh, Worldly people are saying, Jesus, take the wheel. Well, she still ain't let Jesus take the wheel. Showing off her provocative self. I didn't see it. I read an article about it, and it was stupid. It was a headline. All I saw was when I was scrolling a headline. said her legs are more muscular than football players. I said, that's stupid. The only way they could know that is if she's showing them off. So Jesus hadn't taken the wheel yet. See, now, now here's another foundational thing I'm going to get into, but it will have to be Wednesday night. Uh, which is this, the way we think. Because if you don't think like God thinks, you're going to be like, well, what's wrong with her showing her legs off? Everything. Uh, you know, I'm just telling you all this because I saw that Dateline thing last night with my wife because the little deal on there was uh, 
this guy got murdered because his wife's a Christian and didn't want to go through divorce, but she was committing adultery with this guy. I'm like, that's the way people are. They think so whack. Whatever I want to do, God says, he's gracious. He'll forgive me. Well, adultery is a big deal with God. Like, where do you get off? Well, I'm Christian. I won't divorce. Murder my husband. So murder and adultery are okay, but divorce isn't. That's whack. But instead of picking on that lady, though, what I want to do is pick on you and me. Because any area where we let our thinking slip, our foot will then slip. I'll talk more about that. That's, that's not my assignment today. I'm trying to... This has been the most unusual service ever for me. First thing to be aware of. I've got to give you this before we go. We'll be out here soon, okay? You've got to be aware of this. If Jesus is your Lord... You will do what he says over what you want. Did you catch that last part? The first thing you got to be aware of, this is foundational. If Jesus is your Lord, you will do what he says over what you want. If I'm going to repeat a third time. If Jesus is your Lord, that means that you will do what he says over what you want. You may not want to do it, but get your want to fixed. Jude 1 says this, verse 3, Beloved, notate this. (laughs) Anytime you see brethren or beloved in the New Testament, who is it written to? Who? Yeah, it's written directly to you. So you go ahead and put your name. For me, I'd say Jeremy. Jude wrote this to me. Wow. That's pretty cool. The half-brother Jesus wrote me a letter. You see how it changes the dynamic if you take the word personally? It says, I was very diligent. He was very diligent. Why wouldn't you be? I mean, I think this guy would know, don't you think? Jude? You think he knows more? Than a modern preacher that says, just relax, just chill. See, he was more diligent. He He was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation. So this is common salvation. He's not diving to the deep. This is foundational stuff, guys. He said, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend. That means fight. Earnestly means passionately. See, if you don't have some passion about you, there's not much you're going to accomplish in the kingdom of God. We'll have to pause right there for today. You can finish the series next time. Or more importantly, if you'd like to go online, you can find it all at AccelerateChurch.cc. Under the Sermons tab, you can find this Building a Strong Foundation, where Pastor Jeremy teaches it all right there online. And if you're in the area, we'd love to meet you. We have service time Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. You are welcome to join us for any and every service you're available. We'd love to see you at Accelerate Church, 4400 South Crockett in Amarillo.